Is there a striker in the UFC right now who can best the fearsome Alex Pereira on their feet? Oh! That's That's a right up. That's it. Well, Israel Adesanya proved that he could. But if Stylebender's technical mastery is on one side of the fighting spectrum, then Yuri Prezhazka's uncontrollable chaos is on the other. Toughness shown on each side. His big elbow! Oh, wow! Yuri Prohaska! There's never been a fighter who has mixed the old and new quite like this former 205-pound champion. You simply cannot imitate what this Czech warrior does in a cage. And even if you could, you'd have to be crazy to even try. Debuting as a pro all the way back in 2012, while you could see the raw materials that he would eventually refine into his fighting approach, early Yuri was all about aggression, pace, and pure violence. He wasn't the type of wait around for his opening. No, Prajaska brought chaos with him every time he stepped into the ring. And his early wins were often quick and decisive. It didn't always work out. and an early loss to Bojan Velikovic might have caused some major changes in most fighters. But Yuri clearly believed in his approach to combat. And after a 6-2 run to kick off his pro career, Yuri would go on a run that would eventually lead him to the Japanese promotion, Risen. There, he would find an audience for his work. And in his debut as a heavyweight, he finished the icon Satoshi Ishii in just over 90 seconds to announce his arrival. Running over this 240-pound monster who would share the cage with legends like Mirko Krokop, Fedor Emelianenko, and Tim Sylvia. He then went on to beat Vadim Nimkov, a fighter who is on an absolute tear in Bellator as their light heavyweight champion. This was probably the best win on paper of Yuri's early pre-UFC career, but the violence was far from through. The Before Yuri found himself on the winning streak that would eventually lead him to the top flight, he would suffer a rough first round KO loss to King Mo, Muhammad Lawal. And if there's one recurring theme throughout the career of this electric talent, it's that he is very, very hittable. And when you take a clean counter shot from a guy as jacked as King Mo, you're likely going to sleep. But while Yuri Prozhazka would come up short in a big way here, he would never again lose a fight up to the present day. In fact, his run of 13 fights would lead him all the way to UFC gold. And just five months later, Yuri made his comeback, taking on the fighting icon Kazuyuki Fujita at a catchweight, taking just over three minutes to get him out of there. Oh, it's KO. A very rare decision victory would follow next before Yuri scored the five consecutive first round KOs to set up a rematch with King Mo. This time, the inaugural light heavyweight championship belt on the line. And this time, he didn't fall short, dragging Lawal into the deep waters of the third round before finishing him to take home the belt. And this win would truly put this blossoming violence merchant on the map. Many hardcore started to take note. And as the risen light heavyweight king, he only elevated his stock through a pair of back-to-back -back first round KOs of UFC tested opposition and Fabio Maldonado <laughs> and CB Dolloway. Around this point in time, you could really see his distinctive fighting style taking shape. He was still pressing forward constantly and throwing like a maniac, but there was more and more artistry to what he was doing, and he even started to look like a samurai. According to Yuri himself, he began to seriously take on the Bushido philosophies when he first got his hands on Mushashi's The Book of Five Rings, and in adopting a life of pure discipline and adherence to his craft, the results started to pile up. And at this point, Yuri's reputation as an intense action fighter with a record of 26 wins and only three losses was enough for the UFC to sit up and take note. 
And when Dana White and his team came a-knocking, they didn't just give Yuri any old matchup. No, a spot in the top 10 was immediately up for grabs, and his opponent, Vulcan Oezdemur, was not too far removed from fighting of UFC gold at 205 pounds. And if this was your first introduction to Yuri Prajaska, boy, did he put on a show. All of a weird and wonderful movement was front and center as Yuri pivoted oddly in front of his highly dangerous opponent, totally fearless in the face of the power coming back at him. I mean, both men can, men can crack, they both possess power. But Vulcan seemed just as confused as the rest of us with this totally unique adversary. And in the early stages, Yuri's weird angles and shot selection seemed to be flustering Vulcan. But as the bout wore on, Ozdemir, to his credit, managed to mount some credible offenses, landing enough shots to earn Yuri's respect, even wobbling him on more than one occasion. And there have been a lot of past examples of that. Jimmy Manawa, ooh, whoa! Is as the commentators openly questioned Prozhaskov fundamentals, as I said before, you don't really want to learn on the job when you're in the UFC. His unwillingness to keep his hands up, Vulcan did start to have some success. But Yuri's talent for finding his moment is unmatched. And when the sheer pace of his offense started to wear on Ozdemir, Yuri grew in confidence. And after barreling forward with his target up against the cage, Yuri uncorked a huge overhand that put Vulcan out cold. Went for the flying knee. Oh, oh there it is! Yuri Baby boy. Welcome to the big show! Man. Just like that, a new star within the UFC was born. And with his spot in the top five sealed, the promotion wasted no time in setting him up for a clash with the former title challenger, Dominic Reyes, a man who many people believed to be the first fighter to clearly get the better of John Jones over five rounds. But in there with Yuri, it was obvious that Reyes was struggling to fight to his usual style rocking Prajaska several times with his deft countering ability. He even supposedly knocked Yuri out for a split second when Prajaska's head hit the canvas as they both tumbled to the mat. And when you step into hell with a fighter as wild as Yuri, there's generally only going to be one outcome. Reyes, just like most fighters who face Yuri, started to wilt in round two. Prajaska himself has a habit of looking like he's slowing down, but he's still very capable of stepping on the gas when the moment comes. And this time, that moment came when he started slicing away at Reyes with a series of elbows, only to miss wildly at the final one. But just as he went off balance and Reyes saw his opponent, Yuri sprung the trap, spinning into the perfect elbow shot that totally flattened the top ranked 205 pounder for an instant KO of the year. Reyes still firing back. Toughness shown on each side. Oh, Spinning elbow! Whoa! Wow! Gary Prohaska! And in a division that was not too heavy on marketable contenders, Yuri Prohaska had signaled to the fans of the UFC that he was ready for a title shot. When that bout came, it was the tried and tested veteran Glover Teixeira who met him. A sturdy, hard-nosed BJJ black belt with power in his hands and a wealth of experience at the top level. Indeed, he was getting on in age. But as a stylistic test for Yuri, Glover posed some interesting questions. And man, was this fight exciting. Over the first four rounds, these two warriors threw down in every aspect of the mixed martial arts experience. Glover's physicality and skills on the mat were evident but Prozhazka proved that he was no slouch there. And on the feet, the sheer recklessness of both men was truly astounding. It was almost as if they had an unspoken agreement to leave every single ounce of themselves in that cage. Sure, the fight IQ on display was virtually non-existent, but it was almost shocking to see this bout reach its final round. Fifth and final round, standing ovation in Singapore. And in the early stages, some hammer blows from Teixeira, following by some dominant top control, seemed to indicate that Yuri's luck had finally ran out. And this is just Yuri be Oh! Massive right from Teixeira! Prohaska! But in the final minute of the final round, something truly miraculous happened. Despite the insane pace of the opening 24 minutes, Yuri found something within himself, and in one last-ditch attempt to capture UFC gold, he reversed Glover on top, sweeping him to take top position 
and after moving to a crucifix and taking the back, Prezhazka somehow managed to find a rear naked choke to tap out the most credential submission artist in 205 pound right, history. Correct. There's been some opportunities, some control oh! opportunities. It's third! He's got it's it! It's under the neck! He, he, he got the hand down. He got down the though. hand, he got the hand. No, but they still got it again. He got oh, it, he that's it! Yuri yeah, Prohaska has done it! Nearly at the gun! There is a new light heavyweight champion! And he did that in the final minute of a five-round war. Yuri Prozhaska had finally arrived as a star, and on the pantheon of dramatic title-winning performances, this has to rank up there with the most unlikely victories you will ever see. Unfortunately for this newly crowned champ, he would not get his opponent to extend his reign due to a harrowing shoulder injury that promised to keep him out of action for a long time. And being the warrior he is, he decided not to hold up the division, immediately relinquishing his title to ensure that he could heal without external pressure. And as it turned out, his decision was the right one. 18 months later, Yuri Prozhazka will return to the octagon to take on the fearsome former UFC middleweight champion and two-time weight glory champion Alex Pereira for the now vacant, undisputed light heavyweight title. It's the unparalleled finishing ability of Poetin against the uncontrollable chaos of the Czech Samurai. Will Pereira's ability to find his target prove to be Yuri's undoing? Or will Prozhazka's knack for dragging his opponents into brutal warfare be enough to upset the more skilled kickboxer? Well, November 11's co-main event contest might come second on the billing to John Jones versus Stipe Miocic, but there's a very good chance that Prozhazka versus Poetan absolutely steals the show.